The Blaze Radio Network. On demand. Love. Courage. Truth. Glenn Beck. You could hear the screams from a block away. The shrieks. The shrieks. Desperate. Filled with agony. The screaming went on for what seemed like hours, but their cries for help would not be answered because uh, there was really nothing to save them uh, from. Uh, They were just screaming at the sky. So I don't really understand this, but uh, it was powerful. It was powerful. There were people last night that gathered in cities all across America uh, to scream at the sky, literally just screaming at the sky. The activists gathered together on the street corners in New York City and Chicago and Washington, D.C. to attend a Facebook event called Scream Helplessly at the Sky on the Anniversary of the Election. My gosh. We are going to be remembered as a society of geniuses. Really, seriously. People are going to look back and go, my gosh, those people had it in control. People would RSVP, they literally RSVP'd and showed up in major cities to shout into the night sky about how much they hated Trump. Sure, there's a better way to relieve frustration than trolling people on social media and typing nasty messages to those with different political views. Uh, But really, screaming at the sky? Do you, and I'm talking to the protesters, do you have friends? Do you... (laughs) Have you ever dated a girl or a boy or, you know, and you I'm not suggesting that you have to. You could date anything you want, a matchbox car. And I support that. Do you have families? Were there no reruns of Friends or even the Golden Girls to watch last night? No fresh paint to watch to dry. It amazes me that we live in a sea of people that have no idea about how valuable time is and how to use your intellect. If you are a leftist activist, at least take some peaceful action or come up with a witty limerick to chant. I mean, I mean, at least Jesse Jackson came up with rhymes. Screaming at the sky helplessly just makes you look pretty ridiculous. And I don't know if you know this, but it's not going to get him out of office. Uh, but I, I want to have a serious conversation with you. Just, I just, I want to point this out and I don't want to upset you. I don't want to create a, 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 an unsafe feeling here because I want you to feel safe, but I just want to point out that screaming out like that and just ah, you added a ton of unnecessary co2 to the atmosphere and i don't think you want to do that do you it's thursday november 9th you're listening to the glenn beck program so I saw something yesterday I thought had to be a joke. But it's, 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 it's really not. Yeah, because you seem to be joking a lot. Yeah, uh, I know. So I know. far on the show. I know. You're I know. mocking people who no, are screaming I, helplessly at the sky. I know. Well, I know. What are you supposed to do in a culture that allows legal chainsaw bayonets <laughs> on their guns? This, right? Right? Am I right? And you might think it's a joke. You might think it's it's some no. silly uh, thing. I don't no. know. But, I mean, I can tell you this. It scared the hell out of me when I saw it yesterday from USA Today. Okay, so USA Today um, put out a video of all of the attachments, like a flashlight. Good God, you could put a flashlight on the end of a gun? Why would someone ever need something like that? It's almost as if you'd want to see where the bullets were going. <sighs> see where what's in front of you. It's crazy. These these. Uh, then they showed a laser sight. Mm-hmm. Uh, hello, does anybody remember Doctor Evil? What was he putting on the top of sharks' heads? Lasers. 
So that is really, they actually did this video, if you haven't seen it. Yes. Um, and it does go through, it first kind of goes through mm-hmm. uh, the actual mm-hmm. attachments that were on the gun that the shooter used. Yes. And yes. then they go through some other attachments, uh, that possible are, attachments. That are available. And people do this. They yeah. put lasers on their guns. And, and, and it has, for, it says possible modifications. Possible modifications. And they start here with a 100 round drum, drum magazine. magazine. Okay. Oh. They also have a shotgun attachment so to if you think to the end a sh- of a gun a shotgun attachment you would attach another shotgun below it a shotgun attachment mm-hmm. now that is not something i have seen before but if I, it's in usa today i understand is mm-hmm. a shotgun attachment i get that and of course uh, most terrifying is the chainsaw bayonet don't even say that out loud I, well, I unfortunately just have, uh, so it's really impossible to stop I wish now. you hadn't. Okay. Because this one, once people get the idea that this is available, that you can go out in a store and you can buy an attachment for your AR, and it's a chainsaw, and you just mount that chainsaw underneath the, the barrel so it's, it's a chainsaw bayonet, my gosh, do you know the... Do you know the kind of carnage? Oh, my gosh. I mean, everyone's going to have one of these by the end of the week, and that's what's it's terrifying to me. You know, I, I used to be for the Second Amendment. Yeah. Then chainsaw bayonet. Mm-hmm. So now let me just say that I don't think, and I'm doing something at 5 o'clock tonight, that I, mm-hmm. I believe we're going we're gonna to take you through the fantasy land that Hollywood lives in. Because I don't think that they can find the difference between truth and fiction. I, I really, you know, it's like these, uh, these actors who are, are like, well, when I was climbing the, uh, you know, the Himalayas with Niblick, with who? He was my Sherpa guide. That was a movie, man. <laughs> that was a movie. And they have no idea the difference between real life and movies and fiction. George Takai yesterday tweeted out, how in the United Federation of Planets, they had universal health care. George, I want you to... <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but the United Federation of Planets doesn't exist. It's a TV show. No, it's also movies. <laughs> yeah. So... Okay. All right. See, so that's so back up. When I source there. When I. <laughs> right? That's how that works, you're right? Right? You're right. right? When you're right, you're okay. right. Okay, good. Uh, so when I saw the the chainsaw bayonet. Mm. Terrifying. I. First of all, I was like, I've got to get me one of them. <laughs> um, I actually think I do yeah, want one if and, they exist. Uh, and then the, the second thing that I thought of is this. The people that are telling you that guns are evil are so disconnected from reality that they actually think that there is a movement to attach chainsaws to ARs. That that, that is something you could just, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to Cabela's. I'm going to Cabela's. Uh, I'm just going to grab a chainsaw attachment, honey. I'll be right back. That's like I, a totally normal thing to them. Right. Uh, they, they would attach that. And they would, I mean, it's, it's, it's ridiculous to believe. So we started looking into it. The gun exists, and I have it. You do. And uh, this is, a, by the way, do not try this at home because they're, this is a, it's a very this dangerous is, weapon. This is the actual gun that they are basing. And I'm not kidding you. This is the gun that they are basing that attachment on. And as you see, Stu, I don't want to point it to you. No, please don't. It's uh, very scary. I'm pointing it right to the camera. You will see that this is a uh, this is an AR. Oh my gosh! Okay, I don't know. It's and an right underneath is the chainsaw. Now, some would say mm-hmm. that potentially that gun seems to come from the video game Games of of War. Or uh, Gears that's of War. what some would mm-hmm. say. What's the difference between real life and a video game? Apparently, to many in the media, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> right. Exactly right. This is from the video game, and a lot of people think that's actually where they got this idea because it was a popular video where, game in the nineties. Where, where else would you get that idea? I mean, I, there have are you ever some... heard of that. I've never heard of it. There are a few like YouTubers who have sort of jokingly attached, mm-hmm. uh, you know, chainsaws to guns, <laughs> you know, and then they, I guess they then 
use the chainsaw. But it's not like it's like a, a, an actual functional thing. There's no oh reason. Gosh. Oh my gosh, Stu, you are so stupid. Well, no, I know. I don't. I am gonna. Uh, you know what? Um, could we get uh, here? Here, I got it. I got it. I brought in. I brought in a few things today. You brought in a few things today. He's across the room now, and so I brought in the AR. Okay. Okay. All right. Be careful with that. No, I know. Brought the AR in, mm-hmm. and I brought in a chainsaw. That's a okay. So I have the AR and a chainsaw. And a real chainsaw. Wait a minute. The... I've got more. I also have a shotgun, right? A handgun, and some duct tape. I am, I am of the minds mm-hmm. that USA Today was on to something, and uh, I believe that we need to make one of these. So, could we, is Jason around? Come here, Jason. Jason is uh, our uh, today in-house weapons expert. Now, Jason, what I'd like to do is, first, I'd like to take the uh, AR, and it is uh, unloaded and safe. Uh, I would like you to take the AR, and we want to attach the chainsaw right here. Come here. We want to attach the chainsaw. Now, I'm left-handed, so I'm going to be... I'm going to be shooting like this. Mm -hmm. So I'd like the chainsaw right here so I can, you know what I mean? So I think it should be like that. Okay, because that... Wait, but that's not how the design is on the actual chainsaw bayonet. The chainsaw bayonet from USA Today, which is what we're talking about, has it underneath. That's not as... as, This is this... You know, you can go with a... You can go with that. Sure, you can I have the schematic right here. Yeah, well, I don't want it that way. I want it like right there. You want it okay, on the so side, wait. basically? They have it like this. Yeah, because I want it at the side, because I want to be able to chop shoot, their shoot heads off. So wait, 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 so you, wait what, the concept of this would be you would shoot the person? You'd shoot the person, and then you could chop their heads off. After you've shot them? Sure. Why would you want... What's the Why purpose would? of chopping their heads off after you've already... Because there's dead, and then there's like, that was sick. <laughs> okay, so okay. Just, just straight out so blood just like, uh, Oh, yeah. Okay. Making sure. Are, are you a member of the NRA? I, I, I'm not, so maybe oh. I don't understand. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's blood just lust. it's bloodlust. Yeah, it's just uh, you know every member of the NRA knows. I want to shoot something, and then I want to take a chainsaw and just hack it up. Really? Because the guy who, who was an NRA instructor who mm-hmm. stopped the shooting. Yeah, he used he, one of these. No, well, yeah, he used the gun. Yeah, he didn't he use used, the chainsaw. No, he used an AR. Right. I mean, ARs have to be removed because they're only made for killing people. Right. Except. He didn't kill him. He wounded him and stopped the slaughter with his AR. But by pay no attention to that, you know, because he didn't kill him. A lot of people aren't paying attention to it, yeah, it seems right. like. Yeah. So he had just the AR, uh, but I'm going to have the AR with the chainsaw attachment. Okay, so can we work on that right now? Can you just take that over there? Because I've got some other attachments I would like to add to it as well. Uh, for instance, um, Stu, what is this? That well, that's a knife. A knife. What kind of knife is it? Uh, I would say steak knife. Yeah, it's it's what you would think, right? It's just a regular. Right. It looks like steak a steak knife. knife to me. Okay, right. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. That's it. Just a regular. Just knife. a regular knife. That's okay. not. Now, I don't st- want you to freak out. I don't want you to freak out. Okay. But what is this? That appears to be a. Another knife. Another knife. Mm-hmm. It's it's a l- slightly larger. It's a okay. like a butcher knife. Well, not quite a it's butcher, a butcher knife. knife. Yeah. Okay. You you don't see the difference here, besides the size. Oh my gosh. What's the okay? So what like is this? Sh- what is this? Oh, okay, that's that's like a butcher knife. That's a butcher right. knife, right? Okay. Yes, that's right. what I would say is a butcher knife. That's not- this is it's a re- regular butcher knife, right? Yes. Does it make you afraid? No, it's like okay, that right. we have them. What's this? Again, like basically a butcher knife. I don't know the exact technical term for that knife. Right, but but it, it makes you afraid, doesn't it? No. I mean, yes, it does. It does? This one's spray painted black. Oh, yeah. yeah this is. is this is a tactical knife. 
This is a butcher knife. But, this is a tactical knife. This is a steak knife. This doesn't make you afraid. This doesn't make you afraid. But I spray painted this one black, so it's now a tactical knife. Don't you? But I, wouldn't they all be sharp and dangerous and stab you in the same? No, but this one's more frightening. Okay. I come at okay. you. Okay. I come at you with this, and you're like. Oh, oh well, that's he, just a normal silver knife. Right. He's just going to come at me and maybe we're going to butcher some meat together. Right? Yeah. Right. I come at you with this and you're like, there must be a steak. But I come at you with this and you know I have deadly intent. Right? That's true. And I'm a serial okay. killer. Right. Because it's it's painted. It's painted black. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm getting it. Okay. Now good. you're bringing me along. Good. Now you're getting it. Okay. So we need to put the tactical knife. Now I was thinking... If we put, except I don't like the look of the tactical knife with this silver handgun. Because that's not a very scary gun. It's just no, silver. No, it's just silver. It oh, looks the like handle an old... is black. And that's, yeah, that part of that it is part scary. That part is scary. Mm-hmm. Like, if I came at you with this gun with the black handle... Then I would be terrified. Then you'd be terrified. But if you had but the, the as barrel... As soon as I put the barrel in, and, and, and you see that it's silver, you're like... It's not a big deal. Okay. That's, that's, so, by the way, I pretty much that is essentially the description of the new Diane Feinstein bill. <laughs> it's it's basically uh, it's basically the her new assault weapons ban is essentially that. Is it a black weapon? <laughs> then it must be banned. Wow, racist! It's almost listen to the racist. Listen to the racist. That's a typical progressive. Hey, can I have uh, Can I have some of that duct tape? Because I'm going to show I'm going to show you here at home. If you happen to be uh, listening, uh, you can go to the Blaze TV and and capture this some sometime later today in case you want to make one of these yourself. But I'll try to be very descriptive on radio. But again, if you can't follow it uh, and you want to get this exactly right. And we're getting some of this on Facebook Live as well. If you okay. go to my Facebook page or Glenn okay. Beck, uh, Facebook or Stu Bergier at Facebook, okay. you, can, uh, you can see this so, happen. You take the Smith & Wesson here, mm-hmm. okay, regular Smith & Wesson. Now, because I uh, because this is I I can carry this, I'm going to show you how to make a concealed carry weapon with a make it at home attachment. Oh my gosh! To make it a little more uh, sick, and this is legal, okay. right? Oh, this is totally legal because oh of the NRA, totally because of the legal. freaking NRA. Yeah. So we'll do that coming up in just a second. I'm very terrified. Well, I hold this butcher knife up. You're not terrified, are you? No, no, it's just okay. silver. Just this ah! one? Okay. Okay. They, we'll go through all of this, because I'm, I'm an NRA member, so I know. And we will also show you uh, the finished product of the real Chainsaw AR coming up in a second. You want to protect your home this holiday season? There's a really easy way to do it. You could make a chainsaw gun, you know, or you go to Simply Safe. Simply Safe has their biggest Black Friday sale ever. Two hundred dollars off Simply Safe's holiday security system. True bestseller, thirteen piece arsenal. Did I just use the word arsenal? Oh my gosh! Covers your whole home. If you want to protect your family, this is how you can do it. Simply Safe has made everything about security effortless. You barely lift a finger. You order it online. It's delivered to your home. It takes less than an hour to set up. A ten year old can do it. In fact, my son, when he was ten. Helped me do it is really easy. No long-term contract, no pushy sales guys, no hidden fees. $15 a month, you own the system, and it's 24-7 alarm monitoring, and you're not locked in. Right now, you can save $200 during Simply Safe's special pre-holiday sale. All you have to do is visit simplysafebeck.com. Simplysafebeck.com. The sale is over November 13th. $200 off your home security system. Simplysafebeck.com. Glenn Beck. Glenn Beck. Now, oh my God. here I am, I mean, with the new Chainsaw AR. And this is, uh, we, we learned this from uh, USA Today, that you can get this as an attachment. Uh, this is, you know, this I did this at home during the break. Uh, and so it's not exactly, you know, uh, ready for market yet. But if you wanted the chainsaw AR, uh, you know, attachment, mm-hmm. I'm willing to sell you this. Um, you seem to have just duct taped a chainsaw to a gun. I would uh, say. Not exactly. 
Not exactly. Not exactly? Because uh, I can see the duct tape, I can see the gun, and I can see the chainsaw. Yeah. It doesn't seem like you've done more than that. Yeah, I didn't do it. Okay? Somebody oh, okay. else did it for me. Got it. So, not exactly, Stu, mm-hmm. but these are kind of the things that you get when you buy the Glenn Beck chainsaw adapter for your AR. You'll then know all of the details. It's not just like you take chainsaw. It's not like I just took a chainsaw and taped it to a gun. Mm-hmm. There's more to it than that. Got it. I had somebody else do it. And it's fifty nine ninety nine <laughs> now at glennbeck.com. <laughs> Glenn Beck. So, pretty great. This is the Glenn Beck Program. This is pretty crazy. Uh, you know, anybody could do this at home, and uh, and I want you to I want you to know. Saw this in USA Today, and people are saying there's no such thing as a chainsaw AR attachment. Well, there is, my friends. There is. You can buy it, and sure, it's a zombie chainsaw thing, and it's a joke. Um, you know, but you can make this at home and that's where this gets dangerous. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're an NRA member like I am, you know that the only people that are NRA members are just sick, twisted killers. And the only reason why you would have a chainsaw AR, which we are making here, uh, we've made it with just duct tape and it is, I mean, you can buy all of these parts at uh, your Home Depot. Now, I'm hoping that duct tape... Uh, according to the media, sure. Yeah, I think so. It's actually I've, easier I've to buy that. than okay. uh, any prescription. Oh, no. This is this is easier to buy than baby blankets. I've heard that. Yeah. I've heard that. You can go in any place and buy a baby blanket. You're going to go through a harder time getting a baby blanket than you are this chainsaw gun. Yeah, it's actually easier to just make a baby blanket out of guns and keep your kid warm. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, and then you really fire is. them, the guns will get warm, and it's actually like an electric blanket. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, I want you to know, uh, these guns could go up. They're fully loaded, and they've got bullets in the chamber. Uh, I think. I haven't checked. Nobody's checked. Uh, somebody just handed them to me, and we didn't even ask, uh, nor did they offer. Um, so they could go off at any time. And, Stu, I know I'm more comfortable around guns you than are. you are. You are. Uh, and I just want you to know, I want you to be really careful, because these guns do have a tendency of just spontaneously firing. Really? Uh, yeah. I have a, I have a friend uh, who his whole family was shot by a pistol that was on the kitchen table. Everyone was in bed. Uh, he survived, thank God. Only by the grace of God, he survived. Okay. Um, but uh, the gun in the middle of the night just started shooting his whole family while they were asleep from the kitchen table. You're sh- sure that he just didn't kill his family? Oh, no, no, no. These guns it these sounds... guns can go off. He, yeah. he survived it, though? He survived. He wrestled the gun to the ground. So he finally. was holding the gun. No, not at the beginning. It was just spontaneously his are on firing. Them. Yeah, that. Yeah, because he was wrestling the gun to the ground in the end. There might be that. that might be a longer story. We should probably. You're revisit. not an NRA member. That's true. Okay? That's true. I'm You're not, not an NRA mm-hmm. member. Okay, so um, you know, I hate these people who are in the media, like you, Stu, right. that just don't know anything about guns, who just try to convince people that they can't spontaneously go off. There's something interesting about you making that criticism as you're holding an AR-15 attached to a chainsaw by green duct tape. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe what you're feeling is it's not quite deadly enough yet. It's not, Well, yeah, it's not okay. finished. So uh, could you come on over here? Because sure. I also have the shotgun attachment that I'm going to put on the other side of the AR, but I need to put the triggers. I need to put the triggers together. Now, can you tape this together? This is getting heavy, Stu, so... Um, so what's the best? Uh, right there around the barrel I first, I think. Two. Yeah, yeah, put it there. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now, this may be a problem because I, it's a pump action, and I'm not going to be able to pump it, so I better be able to kill the person. But I guess I could attach it. I want to. You know what I want to do is I want to shoot him in the head, then I want to blow a hole through their chest, then... I want to cut that head off, don't you think? I think so. I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm attaching it by the barrel. All right. Well, that will might melt. I'm a little concerned. <laughs> well, it's better than only having one shot. Yeah, because you never know what's going to happen. 
And again, the only reason you you need this is not for hunting, not for hunting. This is just for the sport of killing, which I think so many Americans are really into. I mean, Americans are just bad people. They're just bad people. So can you, if you just attach it right down here, maybe right here. So these two things are. You got to make sure you're getting yeah, all you, the triggers. You got to get. Yeah, you got to get the triggers clean. Get it around the just the two guns. You don't need it around that. Okay, got it. And when we're done with this, Stu, what I would like to do is I would like to transform this chainsaw and make it fully automatic. A fully automatic chainsaw? Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to now, now, you know, we learned this in our NRA secret meetings. Okay, I think we're good on that. Really? Yeah, I think we're good on that. Yeah, I've got a, yeah, so, so look, so I can... Yeah, I can get both. I have both my finger on the trigger of the uh, the shotgun, the AR, and uh, if we can make, I want to make the chainsaw fully automatic. So if you would just tape down this safety device. Tape. Now, this is what we learn in our secret meetings at the NRA, how to just tape down all of the safety things. Um, but if you tape down the safety on the chainsaw. Well, you wouldn't be able to turn it off then. Right. Okay. That's what I want. I want okay. one that's just completely out of control without any way of ever stopping it. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm a little concerned of how close the barrels and the chainsaw are. I feel like you might cut the gun. Uh, yeah, we may have to look at that in some testing, but we need some vic- people uh, to, uh, to help us on that. I think if we just, if you tighter. just tighter right there, I think that'll pull that away from the barrel. Yeah, yeah, just put that there. You got it? Yeah, yeah. Now pull it really down. You got to pull it really down. There you go. There you go. Now, so there is no difference between this show and what Al-Qaeda does with their magazine. (laughs) Insight? Yeah, insight. They're showing you how to make things. Um, We're showing you exactly how to make a chainsaw AR shotgun with tools that you have at home. It's this easy. It's this easy. And again, all of these things you can buy uh, at your local bookstore. The AR-15 and the shotgun at the bookstore? I'm pretty sure. Okay. Easier to buy an AR-15 than a book. Uh, I've heard so, that. Okay. I've actually heard that. Now, I want to do one other thing, and I need your advice on this. Here's a good Smith & Wesson. You a, know, a handgun. Okay. Mm-hmm. Good. It just, a, you know, just good. It's a 9 millimeter, uh, And you can, you can just carry this, you know, uh, concealed. I don't want to add the tactical knife that has been spray painted black because it looks scary. It it is does know? look scary. So I thought I would add the non-tactical butcher knife which doesn't look scary, you know, and that way I could carry it uh, you know, concealed. Got if you just tape that onto the barrel there, and then I can I could carry this as a concealed weapon in case in I want yeah, in my, well, not in my your belt? pocket. Because, yeah. I mean, it's a real sharp knife. Yeah, well. I, it I'll, might cut your leg, potentially, as you it might cut my hand as I'm putting this on. Well, it's not like the movies. Okay, this is real life. You don't just stuff it in your pants. Oh. Okay? So now. <laughs> it's a real knife, guys. So, yeah, I just so, found that out. So uh, now, and a fully loaded gun with a round in the chamber. We haven't even checked it. <laughs> uh, okay, so, you- so now, so now, if I want to go. You know, if let's say a let's say a guy comes up to me. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I feel in danger for my life. Right. I can now shoot him, but I also get the satisfaction that I get for the for the the real deal, the AR shotgun uh, uh, chainsaw. Mm -hmm. I can still, if I'm just out and about, hack somebody after they've been shot. So, yeah, because right now you have a butcher knife that extends past the barrel of your handgun. Yeah. So I shoot and then hack and then shoot and then hack. And that way I'm not I'm not I'm not comfortable around gun knives right now yet. I'm just starting to I, 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 it can go off. This knife could fly off and just go right into your head. I taped it. It can fly <laughs> off. Trust me. I am concerned. So I can, you know, I can do that or I could hold it like the butcher knife. But then I expose the black handle, which makes it look like a tactical gun. Should I put some silver tape around the black handle? Because it's too scary, I think. No. Me, I, like, are you sure? Because I can just... All right. All right. Because I just think it that way, be... that way you won't be as frightened by it? Yeah, I won't be. Because I'm so right now, now a little scared. So if I just right. tape up this black the part... The black part. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Now it, it does not look like no, a tactical gun. Now this is now you feel safe. It looks great. Now you feel safe. Do you feel safe? Oh, yeah, it's almost. So if I say I'm going to hack and then shoot, hack and then shoot. Look, you didn't even flinch. I didn't even flinch. It's, you didn't even flinch. Now, but the problem I think I have at this point is that mm-hmm. the chainsaw shotgun AR-15 combination you put together here has no knife attachments at all. Okay. Well, uh, it also doesn't have anything. Let's say that my shotgun AR and uh, my uh, chainsaw don't do the job. Right. I think we need to put this attachment right here on the, on the chainsaw. Oh, uh, well, wait a minute. Hang on just is, a second. Is that the right place? I'm How afraid I think like the chainsaw it. needs a silencer right here. Because the chainsaw would be too loud. Yeah, you're going to hear me coming if we don't put a chainsaw silencer on it. Okay, we can work on that. We All right, so let's, let's, let's not attach that there. How about we attach that, the gun, right here? On top of the on top of the gun. Oh, but we'll do it gangster style. We'll do it upside down. Wait, but then the 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 blade of the knife is just pointing up back at you. Well, because you're gonna hack somebody. So you're gonna have to turn the entire thing upside down. Oh, you're right. When you're right, you're right, Stu. Okay. How about how about right here? We put it right here. Okay, that makes yeah, a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. So we put it at the end of the barrel. If you're watching at home, this is very good. You're gonna. And please don't deviate from this, because I can't guarantee your safety if you deviate from the way we've made this. Okay. All right. Okay. This is brilliant. It's a little... So it's still a little concealed now that we put the handgun at the end. Yeah, I think I need a little. And not as scary, because it's not black. It's all silver. It's true. So you, if I pull this out, I might be able... What, what are you worried about? What are you worried about? Well, the, again, the blade and the guns keep touching, and I feel like when you turn the chainsaw on, it's going to cut the guns, and all the certainly all the tape around the guns. Well, <laughs> I don't, I don't know if it's the most efficient thing. Well, we can work on that. After but I, why? I don't. What I don't, I guess, understand at this I need point a is silencer. Why there are several extra knives just here? Why wouldn't they be attached to this? I don't. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. I think it has to go up, Stu, because the chainsaw is well, going one way. I mean, what if, if what happens if I suddenly because I'm left-handed, I suddenly want to chop the oh, other that's way? True. So you want to have you would be able to chop either way. So either you get way. something that's going to cut something. Right. Um, and usually, by the way, it will be a dead body because you will have already shot it. Yeah, that's no, something. no, no. This is just for the this is just for the blood sport. That's all this is. And there you're is saying, no I- one that needs a. Uh, Nine millimeter, uh, you know, uh, handgun, butcher knife, shotgun, AR-15, tactical butcher knife, chainsaw <laughs> that has been silenced. You're Nobody got a blanket statement. You know how many gun rights advocates out there? Are just well, saying? I don't mean to say. I mean, you know, I don't. I don't mean to make a blanket statement like that. I'm sure there's somebody out there that that you know needs it, but. Okay, so now we have a chainsaw attached to an AR-15, which is attached to a shotgun, which is attached to a handgun, which what is attached you... to a butcher knife, which is attached to an assault knife. I want a steak knife here just in case I want to eat steak. This is like the Swiss Army part. This is like in okay, case. Okay, yeah, all right. So put that this way. That's This is not a tactical knife. You'll notice if you're building one at home, this is just for you. This is a... This is a non-tactical knife. This is just a steak knife, and we're tying it now, to, or taping it to the handle of the chainsaw. So let's say you're out. This is a handy device as well. You're out in the middle of killing, and uh, and you the, see these are the these are the tips that only the NRA people like me know uh, that that uh, that that USA Today will never understand. I just never understand. So correct me if I'm wrong. The scenario here is yeah. you shoot someone with an AR-15. Then you come in and you chainsaw them, hack them into ch- chunky pieces. Yeah. You blow a hole in them with a shotgun. Yeah. You fire a couple uh, just extra bullets into their head with the uh, with the handgun. Then, in addition to that, you uh, then chop them up with one or two of the big blades. And then once you're down, it, it, they're still... Hamburger. Then you're, well, that, well, you might want to eat that, no, right? No, that's sick. That's sick. Well, what? 
That what? is sick. Okay, all right. Oh. Okay, all right. I, I, I'm uncomfortable now. You've just created a very unsafe space, and I... I'm uncomfortable. Are you sure? Because this is this is unsafe now. I. You started using words, and I feel very unsafe. Just saying. Casper has outdone themselves yet again. Lucky for me, Tanya and I were one of the uh, first uh, people to have the new wave mattress from Casper. They collected three years of data, feedback, foam research, and sleep science. And they created the wave. Now, this is for people like me that have, you know, uh, a hard time sleeping uh, because of uh, pain. Um, I happen to have TOS. And so my shoulders are really, really sore all the time. Uh, You know, you might have knee problems or hip problems. This is um, a great mattress because it follows the curvature of your body. And it has a new top layer that is incredibly soft. Yet it doesn't hurt with a support just below. Like the original, it is uh, made with breathable foam so you can sleep year-round cool. The Wave Mattress, a complete breakthrough that you can find now at Casper.com. Try it in your home for free, 100 nights, Casper.com. Use the promo code BECK. You'll save $75 on your purchase. It's Casper.com, promo code BECK. Minimum purchase is required. See site for details. Terms and conditions do apply. Glenn Beck. Glenn Beck. Okay. Stu has uh, turned this into a hostile work environment by his speech. I, my speech has Your turned speech. it into? Yes. You have a, Everything you, was fine. You have a lot of guns attached to guns and knives yep. to be complaining about. Yeah, and then you started uh, speaking uh, about cannibalism and you created an unsafe zone. Um, all right, so what Watch we that have here... Steak knife. The steak knife is the one I'm really concerned yeah. about. The, the steak, this is just... It's a real steak knife, yet. and it's pointed sideways. You're going to stab yourself with no, it. No, I'm not. I'm a professional. Don't try this at home, kids. Don't do it with Stu. So we have the we have the gun, knife, chainsaw, shotgun, automatic chainsaw, but I want you to know uh, that it is environmentally safe. So any liberal that is watching, the chainsaw is electric. So we won't be putting any CO2 into it. And I know all of the liberals will understand this. There will not be a a 30-round clip anywhere near the AR. Um, We're going to use magazines, but there will not be a 30-round clip because no one has any use for a 30-round clip. (laughs) Glenn Beck. If you travel for business, you know it's a game of wins and losses. Trying to get that uh, chainsaw uh, gun uh, AR-15 into the uh, carry-on compartment, it's just not going to work. Uh, and, and I can promise you Upside.com cannot help you with that problem. However, Upside.com can solve all your business travel pro- problems. First of all, they're going to give you lower prices than you're going to get anywhere else. Secondly, they're going to give you an option. If you want to leave maybe a little bit earlier, a little bit later, uh, maybe t- st- stay a half a mile away, they're going to he- give you huge discounts. And then they're also going to reward you with a gift card to places like Amazon.com every time you buy a business trip. It's fantastic. Their six-star treatment from customer service specialists, they call them navigators, is amazing. They will help you make business travel not suck, and that is a really tough thing to do. Visit Upside.com and use the code BACK. You'll get a minimum $100 gift card to Amazon.com. It's code BACK. Upside.com. Upside.com. You deserve a better business trip. Minimum purchase required. See site for complete details. Glenn Beck. Who is the author of your life? Who is the author of your life? What defines who you are? In late September, five black students woke up to find a message written on the marker boards outside their dorm rooms. The message read, go home, N-word. The students attend the Air Force Academy's prep school. They're hoping to become cadets at the Air Force Academy. In the aftermath of Charlottesville and the NFL National Anthem protests, those hate messages threw gasoline on the fire of the racial debate in America. How could this happen in one of our nation's most prestigious military academies? The messages prompted Lieutenant General Jay Silvera to uh, gather the entire Air Force Academy student body 
and staff, and he rebuked them. If you can't treat someone with dignity and respect, then you need to get out. Now, the video of his rebuke was viewed over a million times on YouTube. This week, the Air Force Academy Prep School announced that they have one candidate less for cadet. He has been expelled because he admitted to writing the racial slurs outside of the dorm rooms on his uh, black schoolmates. Who was it? Turns out this racist incident was a hoax. The perpetrator was actually one of the five black students. Why did he do it? Apparently, it was a weird attempt to get out of trouble. He was in for some other misconduct at the academy. It's an immature teen who made a terrible decision, one he's already paying for, and one now that uh, won't afford him the chance to attend the Air Force Academy. This is not the time to gloat, however, and say, see, these uh, alleged hate crimes are hoaxes. Some of them are hoaxes. Some of them are real hate crimes. Racism is something that affects all human beings, and it is a cancer in ours and any society. This message is obviously not getting through to the youth, so I'll repeat it. Your skin color does not define you. Your background does not define you. Yesterday doesn't define you. Unless you let it. What was it somebody said about being judged by the content of your character and not the color of your skin? Only your character defines you. If we all spend a lot more time working on the content of our own character... Man, there wouldn't be enough time left to have racism real or imagined. It's Thursday, November 9th. You're listening to the Glenn Beck Program. The author of the New York Times bestselling book, Killing England, from BillOReilly.com. It's Bill O'Reilly. He normally joins us on Friday, but... uh, uh, you know, I don't know. He's got a, a golf date or something there at the house that he had may, maybe meet the uh, cable guy or the plumber. So we're we're bowing to the king and welcoming him here on Thursday. Bill O'Reilly, how are you? Very good, Beck. I liked your commentary. I'm going to be out of the country tomorrow. Are you? So uh, where are you, go- where are you going? Frightening people abroad. Yes. Um, I really liked your commentary, Beck. Um, which you know, for me to tell you that is is an amazing thing. <laughs> yeah, um, it is. It is. Usually, you... I, I don't dislike your commentary. Yeah, I but you... ignore it entirely. Yeah, right. You just don't. Um, you don't slum with me very often. Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. But this ties into. The big story of the day on Mm BillOReilly.com, which is the California NAACP demanding that the Star Spangled Banner be jettisoned as the national anthem because it's racist. That's a huge story, and it ties into what we've been talking about for the last four months, the revisionism of American history, which is what Killing England uh, is the um, counter to that. But the um, NAACP, powerful organization with reach, it's not some crazy kids doing uh, insane stuff. They're basically trying to tell the American people this is a racist song. So our country is represented by that, and it should go. And it's a lie, it's a total lie. And now I'm starting to get really angry, Beck. Do you hear it in my voice? I do, I do. It's it's kind of subdued, but I can yeah, see you I mean, going I'm, for an AR uh, chainsaw at any time. Well, last time I frightened you with my, my indignation. I, I wanted to dial it back. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a morning program, so, uh-huh, uh-huh. you know, we want to be mellow. But yeah, sure. Come on. I mean, what we're going to do tonight on BillOReilly.com is going to read the whole four stanzas mm-hmm. of the Star Spangled Banner. Mm-hmm. But they, what they object to is, is a line in the third stanza that says that slaves and other people who are working for the master... The hireling um, and slaves. Can't, yeah, can't find any solace. Right. Well, that's historically accurate. That, that's accurate. In 1814, when that song was written... 
slavery was in full flower in America. And slaves are treated horribly, and, and if they ran away, they could be hung. And um, there was no um, Underground Railroad at the time. That developed afterward. And, and so the stanza is accurate. It's basically criticizing the situation. But these people have turned it around, these people being the anti-American activists, um, have turned it around and saying, okay, this is another example of how America is a racist country, which is what they want the world to believe. Well, Americans themselves don't believe that. But the world, they want the world to believe it. Donald Trump's a white supremacist. Uh, America's racist uh, toward immigrants. That, that's what gets me so angry and has polarized me away from the liberal, secular, progressive movement. You know, I used to, like, even listen to them occasionally and see if they had a point of view. I'm so polarized now. Whenever they, I see them, I cringe. So that's my take this so, morning. So what do you yeah. think about the fifth stanza uh, written by Oliver Wendell Holmes in 1862? Do you think that p- plays a role at all where, where, where he, is, he is extolling the, uh, the freedom of the slaves and all those that we died for to free I mean, that is a clearly pro uh, uh, abolitionist stanza. You know, you're smarter than me. I I wasn't even aware of that. It's never printed. Just look it up, though. Oliver Wendell Holmes uh, did it. It's a good stanza, and and it it reverses. It throws everything that they're saying in reverse. And it was written during the Civil War, but they never print it for some reason. But it was written by Oliver Wendell Holmes. Well, I'm, I'm glad you pointed that out. I didn't know about it. I certainly will look it up now. But the basic premise is much bigger than the Star Spangled Banner. And then that's what I'm trying to get across to everybody, that this is a, a growing movement to demonize the United States of America. I mean, it's, it's growing. When you have the NAACP of California coming out and basically lying saying that the, the national anthem is racist, giving um, refuge to people who want to disrespect it and the flag. I mean, you've got, you got a serious situation here. So you know, it's not being confronted at any, at, in any meaningful way, certainly not by the media. So here's, here's something that I saw. Um, Yahoo printed a story 100 years after the Russian Revolution, what things are like in the former Soviet Union. And um, they were talking about how Lenin is still looming uh, over uh, the Russians, that the statues of Lenin are still everywhere in the parks. They've been removed from the public squares, but they've been put in the parks, et cetera, et cetera, and how those are becoming rallying points. And I, I saw that and I thought, I wonder if the left has learned the lesson at all from that, that you must strip a country clean of all reminders. Otherwise, it, people will be drawn back to that. You have, you know, and, and I want to point out that uh, in, in one of the articles written about the demise of the Soviet Union, 100 million people were killed from the Russian Revolution on to the collapse of the Soviet Union by the communists. 100 million people were murdered to, in, you know, put this um, political um, ideology program into yeah. place. All right. So, you know, you're looking at you're looking at something that's totally unnatural. It's totally against human uh, competitiveness and, and the drive for human beings to improve themselves. And it had to be forced on them um, uh, through murder. Then you contrast it with the United States, which is flawed a country as we are. And, and we are flawed. There's no doubt about it. Give so much opportunity that people are willing to, to travel thousands of miles to illegally sneak across the border and try to make a better life here because they know this is pretty much their only hope. They're not, they're not trying to sneak into Portugal. Um, so, you know, I'm saying to myself, if this isn't arrested soon, if people in leadership positions don't start to stand up soon, we are going to see what you're seeing in Russia the reappearance of this crazy stuff that uh, divides Americans. Well, we, we, and the reappearance of racism as well. Well, we, we already are seeing that, and um, we're seeing the, the rise of 
of uh, Marxism like crazy. We had a full-fledged socialist uh, elected in Virginia, of all places, uh, just on Tuesday. Marxism is alive and very healthy in America. It's designed, though, to stay away from the totalitarian aspect of it. So you don't you don't have people going, oh, Lenin's the greatest guy, and I love Stalin. You don't have that. What you have is the stealth inequality. Whenever your listeners hear the word inequality, be on guard. That's the buzzword, because that's what the socialists want, equality. Well, I went to Cuba. I traveled there. There's no equality in Cuba. Everybody's miserable. Everybody's got a boot on their neck. That's not equality. That's oppression. And, I, again, I, I mean, there's just a few of us. You're one of them, Beck, that are speaking out against this stuff. And the mainstream media is, is sugarcoating it and, in some cases, promoting it as beneficial. And if you go against it, you're a racist. So by me going on BillOReilly.com tonight and saying this is insane, the NAACP is lying, I'm a racist, immediately a racist. And because that's a tactic not to have African-Americans listen to opposing points of view because they all come from racists. Uh, It really, really drives me crazy. Bill O'Reilly from BillOReilly.com. Continue our conversation here in a second. I want to get his uh, point of view on what President Trump did uh, yesterday uh, when he was talking about Cuba and reversing some of the things that President Obama did in a minute. With the recent credit bureau breach, one of the common questions should be, should I freeze my credit No, Um, taking that step is not going to protect you against uh, the identity fraud threat that is arising from the data data, uh, breaches that are happening now. Hackers have gained access to Social Security numbers, birth dates, and an unspecified amount of driver's license. They can use this type of personal information to commit crimes in your name and even steal from your 401k, and they'll be gone before you even know it. Now is the time to sign up for LifeLock.com. LifeLock. They use proprietary technology to detect a wide range of identity thefts. And if there is a problem, a U.S.-based identity restoration specialist is going to work to fix it. And nobody can prevent all identity theft or monitor all transactions at all businesses. But LifeLock can help you see more threats to your identity. So go to LifeLock.com or call 1-800-LIFELOCK, 1-800-LIFELOCK. Use the promo code BECK. You'll save 10% off your LifeLock membership. Visit LifeLock.com or call 1-800-LIFELOCK. Use the promo code BECK. Save 10% now at LifeLock.com. Glenn Beck. Glenn Beck. Bill O'Reilly is uh, with us from BillOReilly.com. His uh, book is out, Killing England. Um, and we're talking about uh, the state of the world today. He's joining us a day early. Um, yesterday, the Trump administration announced that they're reversing some of the things uh, with Cuba because they have a very different stance than than Barack Obama did. The U.N. is upset, says that we need to welcome them into the family of nations and uh, the united states says we don't care if we're alone in this these guys are oppressive does this mean anything to the people in cuba bill uh does it mean anything to the people in cuba it hurts them because obviously tourism uh brings money to the uh, beleaguered and poor island well he's he's people don't know this But tourist dollars do not flow directly to the Cuban people. Tourist dollars, that means, you know, when you uh, rent a hotel room or uh, rent a car or or go to a restaurant, tourist dollars go to the Cuban military. The Cuban military uh, controls all foreign currency on the island. And by that situation, the Castro brothers, the late Fidel and now Raul, by protection from being overthrown because the Cuban military 
is the aristocracy in Cuba. A lot of people don't understand that. So when so, when he said that you could go, the Americans can still go, but you can't give it to uh, certain hotels and state-run yeah, you businesses. You got to go by tours. You, you have to do a tour thing. I went on my own. Um, although we we hired a guide um, to take us around, who was a pro Fidel guy, because you all the guides are. <laughs> yeah. it, but we mocked him. We made fun of him, and he had a pretty good sense of humor about it. I have to say. Um, but what what the point of view from the Trump administration is is basically to tell the world, look, these people aren't doing anything. Raul Castro isn't doing anything to stop the oppression of the Cuban people. Still got the political prisons, still got the secret police. So why are we, why are we actually encouraging that regime? If you look at it that way, it makes sense. But, you know, Barack Obama, his leanings were more socialist than capitalist. I think that's been established. That's the way he saw the world, that socialism is not necessarily bad. But if you go to Cuba and you actually see how oppressive the society is, mm. I mean, these people are scared. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Kim Kardashian went and she said she thought it was very quaint the way they kept everything in the 1950s and and decided <laughs> to keep the, all their cars uh, from the 1950s. So she thought it was quaint. Did she actually use the word quaint? Uh, I, I don't, I don't so. know. If she, I, th I think so. And she she uh, thought really? it was she thought it was really magical the way they they kept all the stuff in the 1950s. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, I I wish I had seen uh, Miss Kardashian walk the potholed streets in her big heels. Yeah. Uh, very dangerous. Yeah. Here's the thing. Here, here's the thing. <laughs> yeah. You have a lot of people in the United States who just don't know anything, Beck. They don't know what communism is or socialism is. They don't know what's happening in Venezuela, and they don't care to know. And, and a lot of these people just form opinions based on nothing. Mm -hmm. And then they hold those opinions, and you have to listen to them. And it's, it's becoming almost frightening. Uh, my, gener my parents, their generation went through the Depression and World War II, I got to tell you, everybody knew what the deuce was going on. Everybody, everybody knew the history of the country and what America was going through. Now that's totally dissipated. I mean, you have people that all they do all day long are the machines. They either got the, the handheld machine or the computer or the games or whatever they're doing. And then they have no, no association with reality at all. And I think Kim Kardashian may fit into that crew. <laughs> <laughs> what? You are going out on a limb, and you, you don't so? know. You don't usually do that. What's your husband's name again? What, what the guy, uh, the rapper? Oh, Kanye. 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 I was in an elevator with him <laughs> in Madison Square Garden. I, 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 I was at a Nick game, and we're leaving. And I, and I went into the elevator, and there were six giant guys. I'm six four. All right. And these guys like dwarfed to me. And then behind, I looked behind is this little guy. And it was Kanye West behind the six giant guys. And I didn't say anything to him. I don't think he likes me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can pretty much guarantee that, Bill. I can guarantee yeah. that. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, the shooting in in Texas uh, when we come back. And I, I, I want to ask you how many more of these are going to happen before uh, the left wins. I mean, it, 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 it's, it, it took shootings in England and it took shootings in Australia before they finally just said, okay, we're confiscating all of the guns and the people gladly gave them. Uh, are we headed in that direction? Do you see that happening? Uh, because that case is being made every single day. Back in a minute. Glenn Beck. This is the Glenn Beck program. So let me start. Let me start with the truth about the shooting. 
Uh, the truth is, this guy was uh, anti-Christian. Uh, he had an axe to grind with a member of the congregation, a, a family member, an in-law. But he also was truly mentally ill. Uh, this guy had been a ticking time bomb for a long time, and the Air Force knew about it. Bill, how did this fall through the cracks? How did this guy who had a record of knowingly and wanting to kill his uh, his uh, stepson, bash and crack his skull, and only spend a year in jail for it, and then not have that passed on to the general public or to the authorities? Well, it seems that the uh, Bo Bergdahl sentencing is spotlighting a tendency in our military services to grant unbelievably lenient sentences to people who transgress in the military, right? So it looks like this guy was in the Air Force, and he brutally treated his wife and baby, and the Air Force didn't really do much to him. Um, They threw him out, but they didn't really pay attention. He wasn't punished the way he should have been inside the service, and then after he left, they pretty, pretty much threw his stuff in the garbage can so that when the background check was made, when he bought the weapons in Texas, his behavior, which would have disqualified him from buying a weapon, was not there. So that's a bureaucratic screw-up. So uh, I think that the military has got to start explaining why their system of justice is so ridiculous. I mean, mean, the Bergdahl thing was stunning, was it not? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. So that's number one. And number two, you're never going to control through bureaucracy crazy people from harming individuals. Mm -hmm. Uh, You you just can't. It's been done from the dawn of civilization. And, And you just can't do it. And now with the ACLU... Um, leading the charge not to put mentally disturbed people in confinement. Remember, this is a far left thing. It used to be much easier in the United States to get people into observation, into institutions to be watched and evaluated. With the ACLU suing constantly since the 1980s, that's almost impossible to do now. So everybody knew in Sutherland Springs that this guy was trouble. But what could anybody, they they couldn't do anything about it. And that's where we are in America today. I mean, you have crazy people walking around all the time, muttering to themselves, armed with knives, pushing people on subway tracks. And the authorities can't do anything until after the crime happens. Let me uh, switch. Let me switch gears. Let me go to um, the Democrats in Donna, Brazil. First of all, the Democrats had a a big win, not unexpected, um, a big win um, this week. And they're flying high or that's what everybody wants us to believe. But their their numbers, their popularity is the lowest it's been in over 25 years. Uh, And they're in a full fledged civil war. And nobody in the media really wants to talk about that. No, because the media, I would say, I put it at about 80, 85 percent registered Democrats in the, in the national media. Um, look, I, I've said this and said this and said this. It's about performance. The American people don't like the Democratic Party and they don't like the Republican Party. It's obvious. All the polls say that. So if the Republican Party wants to avoid Armageddon next year in the midterm elections, it's got to do something. Got to pass tax reform. Got to uh, uh, reevaluate Obamacare and make it easier for Americans to get good health care and not get gutted financially paying for it. Those are the two big ones right there. Tax reform, reforming Obamacare. I just and saw the Republicans I, have, have got to acknowledge that if they can't do that, they're done. I just saw they're Art done for next year. I just saw Art Laffer on uh, Fox News this morning. And, you know, Art's been, you know, he, he's a he's a go along to get along kind of guy. He has, you know, deep opinions and he can fix the economy and uh, he's done it before. 
And they asked him, so you've been instrumental in helping with the uh, Senate bill that's going to be coming out. Uh, and uh, and you were consulted on that. I've never seen Art backpedal so fast. He was like, well, no, no, no. They asked me, but I don't think, you know, I, I don't think they took a critical look at the things that I were it was saying. And, and so I, I would say that I was kind of on the outside, just kind of looking in at that process. <laughs> I mean, I've never seen Art b- try to back away from a group of people like that before. So, well, he's a Reagan guy. Um, this tax reform and tax cuts much different than the Reagan vision was. But the, the key thing here for everybody to understand is, yes, if you're a working American um, and you make between 40 and 150,000 a year, you'll get a little money back. You're going to do a little bit better. But that's not what this is all about. This is about unleashing corporate America in the hope that corporate America will start to invest and expand, thereby providing millions more jobs, and the competition for jobs would rise, therefore wages would rise. That's what this is about. Not about individuals getting more money, although that will happen to a certain crew. It's about getting America into a growth mode, because for eight years under Obama, we didn't have any growth to speak of, nothing. So that, and, and I say, look, stop with the small ball. You're going to phase out this, and it's uh, that, the home mortgage, right? That, and look at the big picture. Give it a chance. So in two years, we'll know if this tax cut works. We'll know if the American economy explodes. And if it does, everybody's better off. Even the rich people, like Beck, who's going to have to pay <laughs> more taxes, because if you invest your money, the stock market is going to go up, and you'll make money there. And you'll make money if you buy real estate or whatever you, your investments may be. Give it a chance. And, and that's what, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here going, you Republicans are so stupid, so rigid. I heard some guy the other day on the radio go, oh, this isn't the Reagan thing. This isn't conservatism. And I'm going, good. You're not going to get ideology to win another election. Trump won as a populist. He didn't win as a Republican conservative. So there you go. (laughs) Uh, Talking to Bill O'Reilly. Bill, do you have any insight on on this Donna Brazil thing? I have a very, I have a lot of difficulty taking anything she says seriously, but is this a real, are these real scandals or is she just trying to sell books? No, Donna Brazil is is genuinely angry that uh, Donald Trump was elected president. And so her anger is manifested in why were we so incompetent or we couldn't defeat him. That's what the book's about. And then she goes in and she, I think, tells the truth about the Clinton campaign and the Democratic National Committee. So I applaud Brazil. I mean, she's under unbelievable fire now. She can't go to any cocktail parties. Nobody will have lunch with her. (laughs) You know, all of that pressure because she lives in Washington. Um, But I think essentially Donna Brazil is telling the truth. So what is the deal with Mark Rich? Because Fox had Seth, to, or Seth Rich, mm-hmm. um, uh, Fox had to retract a story. It was a huge scandal. Here comes Donna Brazil, and she says, "You know, I I worry that the Russians had something to do with it." Mm-hmm. No, wait a minute. This has been deemed an accident. Everybody said anything other than that. Not, not an accident. A, 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 uh, a, a, ba- mm-hmm. a, a, a botched robbery. Mm-hmm. Um, and right. everybody has deemed it that, and anyone who has said that it was anything but that has been a conspiracy theorist. Now, I happen to believe it was a botched robbery, but to hear Donna Brazil say that she, when she heard about that, she was afraid at first that he was killed because he was white. That says something. Two, that when it was, when she found out that it was a robbery, she worried the Russians were involved. You know, I I hate to get into these things because I don't believe in conspiracies, generally speaking. Yeah. You know, I, and I and the rich family has made an appeal. You know, our son is dead. Please leave don't him alone. Inject politics into it. 
I, you know, I, I just really, I can't really add much. And for me, uh, the biggest mouth in the world. Well, let, let, let me ask you this, because I can't add anything to it either, because uh, I don't believe in the conspiracy on it. Um, what you could add to it is, where's the media calling her out, saying the same thing that they said to Fox News? Where, where? Oh, come on. We, we all know, you know, that the media is now descended into a place where they are, Number one, essentially dishonest, and then number two, hypocritical um, to a degree I don't think we've ever seen in this country. So every any fair-minded person, conservative, liberal, independent, has to know that. Yeah, all the surveys show it, all the polls show it, and it's a, it's it's hurting the country. I mean. Dramatic. Is this going to hurt the Democratic Party because they are going so far left? Uh, they're going to the Bernie people. She knows she doesn't have any friends left in the you right. know the middle, so she's throwing her hat in over there. But she's also bringing the conspiracy uh, side of of the fringe with her now. Is that but going? I don't to... think that's going to hold. The key thing here is there are some nuts in the House that are trying to draw up impeachment articles against President Trump. Right. Okay. All right. Nancy Pelosi has now said, please don't do that. Even Nancy Pelosi knows that the Democratic Party will implode if it continues to embrace the loons. And it will. So Trump and the Republicans' best hope is that the media and the Democratic Party continue to be dishonest and continue to be hysterical. So Nancy Pelosi doesn't want the Democratic Party to embrace her? Is that kind does of... not want the Democratic Party to embrace impeachment. Oh, well, cool, because you said the loons, so she I kind of thought you were speaking about... <laughs> yeah, yeah, when, did, when, did, when did she move out of the loon category? <laughs> well, she's still in the loon category, but, you know, Nancy Pelosi is an interesting study. I believe, and I'm probably in a minority, I don't think she believes a word she says. I think she represents a district in San Francisco that's crazy crazy left and she'll tell them anything they want to hear to maintain her power position i think there's a lot of people like that in washington yeah but you know she's portrayed as a zealot i just think she wants the perks i just think she wants the perks and um that's just my assessment of her Hmm. bill o'reilly thank you very much i appreciate it um bill o'reilly.com coming up today you're going to do uh um, you're going to be reading poetry yeah, we're going to do the Star Spangled Banner <laughs> thing on BillOReilly.com. And, um, you know, we're going to plug Killing England, of course. Yeah. And, uh, look, look. Really, you know, Beck, I want to tell you, it's really nice of you to have me on. And uh, I enjoy this every week. Thank you. Sorry and we threw your schedule off. But no, I no, no. It's okay today. Not a problem. We, and do me a favor. Look into the fifth verse, because I, I think uh, I'd be interested to hear I what will. you have to say about that tonight on BillOReilly.com. And, and I, I love Ralph Waldo Emerson. He's my god. I love him. That's uh, not who. <laughs> had anything to do with it (laughs) (laughs) thanks bill okay you guys ask maybe next time we can follow up with bill and ask him the the broadcasting idea of uh, promoting the fact that you're going to promote your book on your show later yeah i don't i'm not sure that's do you tease uh, coming up we're going to promote my book Uh, that's not a typical thing that you would do but but i I, look he's been a lot more successful than i am yeah but uh, killing england number one uh, New York Times bestseller, and of course, you can subscribe at BillOReilly.com for all of Bill's commentary. So I want to talk to you about the uh, state of the world. You know, um, Bill was talking about how this tax thing uh, is going to hope that um, companies start to rebuild and invest in jobs here in America. There's a problem with that, and that is uh, technology. And I believe that technology, we, we are going to find our way around this. It's just going to be disruptive for a long time. But the the future is not in more employees. It really isn't. Let me give you an example. Um, 140,000 employees is what Kodak had at its peak. Kodak, mm-hmm. 140,000. At, uh, at the time of the sale to Facebook, Instagram which is the millennials Kodak, wouldn't you say? Yeah, sure. Yeah. It's, I mean, even their logo is sort of it looks yeah, like old, like, yeah. almost like a Polaroid. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's kind of the old Kodak. Kodak had 140,000 employees. Right. 
Instagram, when it sold for $700 million, had 13. We're entering a different world. Uh, and, uh, and it's going to be turned upside down and inside out. And there's going to be a lot of figuring out as we go in the next 10 years. One of those things we have to figure out is uh, the currency and debt. How do we how do we deal with the debt? May I suggest I don't think there's any way uh, that hasn't been tried under the sun uh, that that succeeds in that. Uh, And that's usually when the world returns to gold. I do not buy gold as an investment. I buy it as an insurance policy. I have 10 percent of anything that I have in gold. Um, you know, I buy Bitcoin, but I don't have anything close to 10%. I don't even have 1% in, uh, in that because that's a bet. This is solid. This I look as an insurance policy for the world going insane. So find out if it's right for your family. Read their important risk information. Go to Goldline right now. They're waiting for your call right now. Ask them about their uh, specials. They'll also give you an American flag pin just for calling. Call 866-GOLDLINE. 1-866-GOLDLINE. 1-866-465-3546 or goldline.com. Glenn Beck. Glenn Beck. Well, if you missed the first hour of the show, you missed a how-to hour, uh, how to take your uh, AR-15 and uh, just add a few attachments, um, and you have yourself a AR-15 automatic chainsaw shotgun handgun. Uh, knife, knife, butcher knife. Butcher knife. Uh, <laughs> and dare I say, uh, assault knife. Don't miss it. Glennbeck.com, first hour. Glenn Beck. Love. Courage. Truth. Glenn Beck. Part of tricks and sideshows. That's what the Democrats are resorting to now. Uh, yesterday, Texas Democrat Al Green stood before the House, gave his colleagues a Christmas deadline to vote on impeaching President Trump. I rise today with a sense of responsibility and duty to the people who have elected me, a sense of duty to this country, a sense of duty to the Constitution of the United States of America. I rise today, Mr. Speaker, to call for the impeachment of the president of the United States of America. Okay, this is not the first time he's done this. Green has actually unveiled former articles of uh, impeachment. He did that last month. A spoiler alert, it uh, never makes it to the floor for a vote. Now, I'm not a law student, but I am a thinker, so I'm going to go out on a limb here. Uh, I think you need evidence or a reason to impeach a sitting president. And I know that sounds crazy, but again, I, I'm, I, I am a thinker. So if Democrats did have somewhat of a good reason to attempt an impeachment, we still know that it, it wouldn't make it through the House. Nancy Pelosi doesn't want it to happen. The Democrats don't want it to happen. They think that it will be really, really bad for them. So what is he doing? Well, nobody is really talking about this in the mainstream media, but the Democratic Party is in just as much trouble as the GOP is. Everybody hates them, just like everybody hates the GOP. Eight years of Obama has left it bankrupt, and it was even extorted by the Clinton campaign, according to Donna Brazil. The funding and fundraising continues to be a disaster. The RNC, believe it or not, raises three times the amount of money as the DNC month after month. Hello. All the hoopla has been on the Virginia election, but the Republicans still have governors in 30 states. Over 20 states have GOP control in both the governorship and the legislature. So it's not really a surprise to see this kind of stuff. Donna Brazil has declared open war on her party. Why? Because she's jumping on Team Bernie. Ultimately, she, I think, wants to sell some books and make some money. But she is 
changing teams. Congressman Al Green knows there's no shot for his impeachment call. So why is he doing it? Well, he doesn't have a book out, but it's the same motive to get some attention and to raise some money. The Democrats are in serious trouble. They are broke and they don't have a cohesive, unifying message that mainstream people want to hear. They're not connecting with anyone. And I'm not saying the GOP is any better. I just want to point this out that that's what's happening in the DNC. So what is it we're going to see in the next few months leading up to the midterms? Parlor tricks and sideshows. It's Thursday, November 9th. You're listening to the Glenn Beck Program. Coach Camille is a former point guard who received a scholarship to USC where she led the Trojans to two NCAA appearances and scored over a thousand points in her career. She was a WNBA draft pick for the Washington Mystics. She continued her pro career in Greece. Internationally, she was the second leading scorer in the conference, guard of the year, and an all all defensive team. When she's not training, she is uh, an assistant coach for uh, Bishop Montgomery Girls Varsity Team. The reason why this non-sports fan is having Camille on is because of a story that I read in the Washington Post. She was um, she was looking for a job, and she found one. She was really excited that she was offered a job by her former college coach, and she received a uh, an assistance position on his staff at the University of uh, or the uh, sorry New Mexico State University. And she was just a couple of days away from getting onto a plane when they called her and said, uh, "Yeah, uh, no, thank you." Why is the story? Camille Lenore, uh, welcome. How are you? I'm great. How are you, Glenn? I'm good. I, I was disturbed by this uh, uh, disturbed by this story. can you Can you tell us what happened? Yeah, so um, I received the job offer from Mark Track and uh, immediately, you know, was thrilled about the offer, and um, we talked about, what I would have to give up to take that position, which would, which meant that I would have to shut down my, my business, my training business. But after some days of, of ruminating and thinking through that, I said, uh, I'll take the position. And he um, offered me a salary of 55000 with an additional 5000 um, coming from his own pocket. And then uh, began to give me um, duties, things to do. Talk, we talked about recruits. He we were about to look at film and break down things. And so I was already fulfilling that position, even though I was still in Los Angeles. And then a couple of days later, um, I got a phone call from him when he said, he said, Camille, we have a problem. Someone's discovered uh, a video of you. And um, he asked me if I still believed in, in, in what I said regarding uh, my biblical views of, of marriage and I told him that I did and that I was still since that video heterosexual and um, a couple of hours hours later he gave me a call back and said we have to take the we're taking a job from you um, so so let me just let me just get this right you want to talk about the world being upside down if 10 years ago somebody would have found uh, a video of somebody saying I am a proud uh, uh, lesbian, and I live a lesbian lifestyle, and that's uh, that's just the way I am. Uh, and my lack of faith in God has uh, uh, plays a big role. You probably wouldn't have got a job maybe twenty years ago, but today, you in this video talked about your faith and said that you used to lead a lesbian lifestyle, but you no longer do. And you are heterosexual, and that's why you can't work at the uh, New Mexico State University. Yes, that that is what happened. There's definitely been a cultural shift, and you know it was sad to to learn that outside that this happened, irrespective of my basketball coaching qualifications. 
you know, that, that was never mentioned. It was about my heterosexuality and my view, my religious views. So, um, they, they are, they are denying that there was any, that there was any discrimination here. Um, they, they, however, in court filing say that your feelings about homosexuality shared in the video would have an, in, uh, an uh, adverse impact and the ability to effectively coach and recruit players who identify as LGBT. Yeah, that's correct. That's what they, that's what they said. Um, and that's what Mark actually said to me that, um, that this would affect recruiting and he, shared that 75% of the current players on his team at the time were gay. And I, I, I explicitly told him, like, Mark, I'm not coming in trying to change anyone's views, lifestyles, or anything. I'm here to make basketball players. And unfortunately, I was just not given that chance based on, you know, a video, my own, very own testimony that was shared seven years ago. So um, are you hostile to people who live a lesbian or alternate lifestyle? No, not at all. Not at all. You know, um, I've been in the lifestyle. So I I think I'm unique in that way where, you know, I I was once gay, um, been around a lot of people in that lifestyle, have have had and still have a friendship with people. Um, And I think Christians get that rap a lot that if, we don't approve or support that we're either um, homophobic or we hate gays and lesbians. And it's not true. I think love and approval are often terms that are, are, are labeled that are synonymous, but I don't believe that to be true. I can love you, but not approve of something that you do. Just like I can love a friend of mine, but not approve of his, promiscuous lifestyle or i can love someone and not approve of you skipping breakfast <laughs> um and so i think those two terms those two beliefs are often interchangeable but i don't think they are so where does this go from here as far as what i mean is there is there uh you know a, a chance that uh, you can stop this discrimination? Would you want to work there if they, if the courts, you know, would suddenly say you have to hire her? Um, well, I, you know, I currently have a position that I enjoy um, at, at the high school that I'm working for. So, no, I, I wouldn't, I don't believe I'll take that position if New Mexico offered it. If another school looked and, and said, hey, you know, we think she's qualified. We love what she brings to the table. Um, I think she'd be a good, a good addition. Yeah, I would consider that. Um, but I think, you know, Mark, he told me that if I didn't take down the video, that it would be very difficult for me to work in, in collegiate basketball. And so I, I think what's left to happen is left. It, it's unseen. I don't know. Do you the, do you the, believe you were a player? So do you believe that that will, is, that is because of the powers that be, or because of the players? You, regarding the fact that you well, would have a hard time working in collegiate basketball, is that because uh, of the administration or because of the players? I, I think it starts with the head. I think it starts with the administration, definitely. Um. So, yeah, Camille, um, I'm I'm uh, I'm glad we could give you uh, some airtime so people could um, see what is is happening in colleges and see what is happening. I think in in bigotry. I, I mean, if you if you uh, you know aren't on a crusade to you know. Um, uh, change everybody's uh, mind or or you know baptize everybody you know in your position i don't i don't understand what the problem is I, I did hear one thing that stuck out to me and you said i used to be gay which i don't think anyone could say a while ago because you had to be born that way 
But now I don't think that is true anymore, that anybody cares because we're told that you can choose and it's how you feel. So I don't know what the problem would be. Somebody who said, yeah, I used to use live a gay lifestyle, but I don't anymore. And here's why. And you can go on your way, but I'm going this way. I don't know why we can't work together. Yeah. Yep. I, I agree with you 100 um, percent. Like I said, I was I am highly qualified for the position. And I think strong assumptions were made on New Mexico State's part that I would come in and try to do that. I've never done that in my coaching career. Um, I, my main goal is to help these young women grow on and off the court as basketball players and to help develop their character, not enforce my my religious views or try to change someone to live because I live a certain way. Camille, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Good luck. This shows you how much the world has changed. I mean, and and how people don't ever grow. Because the the idea the argument used to be I can be gay and not try to convert everybody, right? I this it's not an infection that I'm going to spread and I'm not going to preach my lifestyle, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If anybody would have tried that even 20 years ago, uh, it would have caused an uproar if it was a gay person. And it would have caused an uproar. And people would have said, this isn't right. She's not going to preach her lifestyle. She's not going to convert anybody. And there would have been those people who would have said, oh, I don't want her. She's homosexual. Well, anybody who said, you know, the the oppression has got to stop. You're doing it in reverse. You've just switched roles from the oppressed to the oppressor. If you don't act differently, it ain't going to end. That was the secret of Gandhi and Martin Luther King. They didn't call for retribution. They didn't do what the oppressor was doing. They stopped and offered a third way. I, I, I hope soon that we find somebody on the left that understands this and starts to say, I'm not going to. You know who did? Pendulet. When Pendulet got in front of the atheist community in Washington, D.C. and stood on the stage and said, no. Don't celebrate the death of Christianity. Don't do that. Let's not be what we have accused them of being. Let's reach out and be good to each other. That's when the world changes. Your mortgage rate depends on money factors like the global economy, the loan that you choose, how many points do you pay, and really the variables that you know add the costs are the property type and whether or not it's your primary home, but all of those things you've got to, you really have to have somebody who knows what they're doing on the mortgage and is helping you, not helping the bank. This is the biggest thing I, I really want people to understand when you're going out and buying a home. The mortgage lender works for the bank. They're being paid by the bank. They get uh, bonuses by the bank. That's not the case at American Financing. They are salary-based mortgage experts. And with American Financing, you're going to get straightforward and effortless mortgage experience. All you have to do is call them at 800-906-2440. You're ready to buy a new home? Uh, You want to refinance your home? Call them now at 800-906-2440. They work for you. American Financing, 800-906-2440 or AmericanFinancing.net. American Financing Corporation, NMLS 182334, www.nmlsconsumeraccess.org. Glenn Beck. Glenn Beck. Uh, Scientists have now come out and uh, 
they have said that uh, patients in severe pain receive just as much relief from over-the-counter medications like Tylenol as they do from opioids. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Is that yeah. real? I don't, I, uh, I don't have I'm going to say much. a big negatory on that one. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have that yeah. much experience with opioids uh, myself, but I, I, see, I would yeah. assume. I would Got think. a big gash in my side. Uh, Tylenol? Mm, no, I don't think that's going to do it for me. It doesn't seem like it would. No. But, but I guess maybe technically, because there's an additional effect to, to an opioid, right? Okay, so, Which, here's the, so here's the thing. You know, uh, you take Tylenol. Let's say you cut your hand off, okay? And you go into the emergency room and they sew you back up and they say, uh, where are you on the pain chart? And you're like, I'm the big frowny face. And they're like, Tylenol for you. <laughs> uh, you're, you may get some pain relief, you know? Yeah. Um, and then when you start screaming that I'm going to stab you to death if you don't relieve my pain with something stronger than Tylenol, uh, that's when they bring out something called, uh, you know, the opioid. And they give you the opioid and you still feel the pain. Well, so that's what they're saying. You just right. don't care. Right. Exactly. <laughs> right. That's like, a different process. Wow. Because I, I, went, I can feel the throbbing in my stump and it really, wow, that hurts. I, I, I um, went to the dentist yesterday yeah. and I've come up with a new plan of going to the dentist, which is just get the nitrous every time I go, whether they're doing a cleaning, whether they're doing something painful, anything, every time hook it up because it's fantastic. And as I sat there yesterday in the middle of them poking at my teeth and doing God knows what, and I just felt unbelievably great i thought to myself you know what i thought about the whole time i was under mm -mm. how do i get this into my house i want it at my house I want that to, might be a problem i want a tank next to my couch yeah, that so might. while i'm watching the game i can just strap this thing on and i i don't know I, it's it's incredible I, I would like it actually in my job and so as i'm reading the news every day i would love just a steady stream of nitrous it really is fantastic. I, and the, I don't the, know if I've ever had it. The crazy part about it is when you're done, you know, 20 minutes later, you're completely fine. You're com you can drive. You can walk. It's like propofol. Have you ever had that? No. Except that just puts you out. You take propofol. They give it to you for surgery and stuff. And they're like, okay, I'm going to put you to sleep. And you're like, no, you're not. <laughs> and then you wake up and it's over. And you don't, you don't even, I mean, you don't feel it. It's weird. Drugs are great, aren't they? <laughs> Glenn Beck. You're listening to the Glenn Beck Program. Well, welcome to the uh, program. And uh, welcome to Pat Gray from Pat Gray Unleashed. Hello, Pat. Hello, Glenn. Stu. So Pat did you welcome. hear our uh, our interview with the uh, the basketball coach? That I did, yeah. Lost her job because she's not gay. Yeah, I talked briefly about her er earlier this week, and mm -hmm. it's really interesting. She sounds, you know... Normal. Normal. Completely yeah. normal. Sounds like she should be a basketball coach. She's uh, got the qualifications. They hired her. Uh, the university, uh, uh, New Mexico State University, hired her uh, because of her qualifications. She actually started uh, working her job while she was in uh, California, and then they found a video of her online. And, you know, when you see these crazy videos that people made, you know, she made a crazy video seven years ago mm -hmm. where she said, uh, I'm a Christian, and I used to live the gay lifestyle, but I don't anymore. And, uh, you know, it's because of Jesus. And, of course, you can't have somebody like that. No. Obviously, you don't want those around other women. Correct me no. if I'm wrong. Other, other people, people. Other people. Other people. Correct me if I'm wrong. Con the Constitution uh, bans uh, religious freedom. Like you're it not does, allowed yes. to have. Yeah. You don't have to believe, you're not allowed to I'm believe starting to believe that if is they're true. based on religion. Yes. Yes. Right? I think we I'm can say that here. That's true. Um, uh, what is it? Azusa Pacific University, A Z A U S A. Yeah, it's Azusa. Azusa Pacific University, a Christian private school in Southern California. Uh, the um, uh, the LGBTQ students are now demanding that the school end its support of traditional marriage. There you go. And uh, stop its disapproval of same sex relationships on ca uh, campus. Basically, they have to end their support. This. It's a private religious school, mm -hmm. and they've got a. What are you saying? Uh, they should be able to. Yeah. <laughs> well, 
okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's a, <laughs> yeah, don't, you, I, you better not finish that sentence, <laughs> right. Mr. Gray. I, I, yeah. I, no, okay. I well, we know what finishing. kind of kook he is, so mm-hmm. we can mm-hmm. we can dismiss him and just kind of laugh him off. Because, uh, you know, he, he's so stupid, he doesn't even know he's being demeaned. Uh, but, uh, okay, Pat. So you can't be a woman's basketball coach? No. Uh, unless you're um, 2S LGBTQIA. Wait, wait. Two, 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 two two S. S. You haven't seen the two S. What's two yeah, S? No, it's two S. Two spirit. Two spirit. You have two a spirit man leads the pack. Leads the pack, and no, you, have, I, I mean, you have a man and a woman inside of you. Now look, you want to attach you want to attach two S to the end. I don't have a problem with it, but I mean what, you're going to lead the pack. The way I saw it, it was the L has at lost. the beginning. It was two S LGBTQIA plus. So I have a t- I have two spirits. I have mm-hmm. one trapped inside of me. Do they both drive at the same time or? No, the man you know, takes over when it's driving because you don't want the woman driving. <laughs> <laughs> am I right? You're, you're right. 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 You're, you're right. right. You're right. You're, you're right. right. You're right. Can't argue about that. Yeah. Yeah. Not only is 2S leading the pack here in this, uh-huh. they're also getting two characters. I know. Which This is incredible. What a, you get the two and the S. The L, the G, the B, the T. They've got to be All really one. pissed off here. They are. They're, they're probably pissed at this point. But you not only can you not be a woman's basketball coach, you can't be a member of the Palm Springs City Council without being gay. Every one of the members now gay. Well, okay. First of all, <laughs> first of all, that I mean that wasn't a prerequisite. Uh, they, they were elected officials. That's true. Yeah. That's true. They just so. elected a transgender and a bisexual member. Yeah. So uh, there is makes, some diversity there. There is, there is some <laughs> diversity. Right. Uh, Are there any two S's? No, no two S's. Oh my God! Are there that any hate? Are there any H's? Which is the heter- well a heterosexual are you talking or about, hate? Are you talking about male breeders? <laughs> yes. No. Are there any? No. Are there any MBs? No. Uh, it may be time for white male identifying, you know, breeders to all go and live on the island of misfit toys. I mean, I just don't think there's a place Nobody for us anymore. Nobody wants a Charlie in the box. No one wants a cisgender in the box. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a cisgender in the closet. <laughs> it's gotten to that point where we're the ones who have to be in the closet now. Hasn't I'm it? a square gun that shoots jelly. I'm a white male. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'm Santa. So so Santa sorry. dumped me off here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, wouldn't it be great if it was uh, nobody in the closet? It like, would. I, we don't need yeah, a closet. Yeah. Yeah, you could do what it you would. need to do. I don't understand why this. this I was happens. a little taken aback that the that the whole council identifies in that way because it, does that matter in how you legislate for the city? Because uh, your you be, your sexuality shouldn't have any bearing on the way you. Uh, comport yourself in the city council right. should it that is the point So why do we even know that is the point with the cowboy that rides an ostrich he's still a cowboy mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so why identify him as a cowboy that rides an ostrich <laughs> exactly well, he's still a cowboy you do exactly. see the ostrich Hmm? Well, you see the ostrich, right? Well, you might notice that there's an ostrich there. That might be one of the reasons you'd identify that way. Because people look at the yeah, hate. If you got Listen an ostrich tied up at the hitching post. Yeah, yeah. people are going to be like, all right, gonna, okay. Gonna make right. Fun of you. But in this case, Pat is right. There's no reason to identify no reason. your sexuality. And I will say, I believe Palm Springs has created a very unsafe atmosphere for for you know straight people uh, i i would feel very uncomfortable mm-hmm. uh there's no diversity mm-hmm. at all mm-hmm. no inclusion uh, there's no inclusion uh, heteros and two s's we can we can team up together to get onto the palm springs city council we need one Talk. hetero member and one two s member in there <laughs> and then we'll feel comfortable. are the are the two s's okay with the heteros though <laughs> we, definitely we not i'm gonna say absolutely didn't not we used to go- <laughs> Didn't we used to call two S's schizophrenics? <laughs> <laughs> yes, back in our hateful days. In our hateful, in hateful days. In our hateful days. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay, so, so did you see the movie uh, that that M. Night Shyamalan made just recently with, uh, uh, what's his name? It was Split. Oh, Split. Split. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is he a 2S or an 8S? Or? He's a 26S. He's a 26S. 26S. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Okay, so. well, all right.
Mm-hmm. Okay, good. I'm 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 glad that we've worked this all out. So what's it at two two S L G B T. We Q. Are, we know those. Q I. But Q is questioning or queer. Do we ever figure that out? Uh, it's queer. Okay, queer. I, I intersex. intersex. Wait, wait, and wait, wait, a- wait, 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 wait. I'm still back at Q. <laughs> Hang on just a second. Mm-hmm. Q was questioning. I think it's queer. No, I know, but it was questioning. Was yeah, it? at one point, I think. Okay. okay. I think it's kind of, it, the Q is Because queer was something that you were not allowed to say for, I don't a remember when. You were not allowed to say queer. Mm-hmm. And then, so I think the Q was originally questioning. Where have the questioning people been relegated? Because if all of a sudden it became queer, what happened to the questioning people who are standing now in the in the you know out on the porch? Going, They've been asked to make up their minds. Make really? up your minds. Yeah. yeah, you can't question anymore. You got to just commit. You got to commit. <laughs> no, really? I don't yes. think that's, <laughs> that's what it is. okay. And then there's I, I for what intersex intersex and. <laughs> I'm going to pretend this is just an act. This is showbiz, babe. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I am pretending mm-hmm. I don't know what intersex is. I'm confused on the difference between intersex and trans. Is there a, a difference? I don't know. I don't either. Uh, I don't want to Google it either. <laughs> Asexual is the next one. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Mm-hmm. So, so little, could you Google intersex, please? I can. <clears throat> I just, I'd like uh, to, why do you not want to Google? You I just, I don't, you don't up. know what's going to pop up here. Mm-hmm. I don't have any filters on. Uh, what is intersex? Intersex uh, society Probably of North America. America. Listen, to, hang on just a second. Listen to that. He doesn't want to Google because you don't know what might pop up. Probably something healthy. Mm. Well, it is. The Intersex <laughs> Society of North America has popped up. Now, okay. I will say putting the word mm. sex into Google doesn't always turn out this way. Oh, but okay. All right. Mm, will, uh, intersex is a general term used for a variety of conditions. <laughs> oh, wow. Whoa. 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 Hate groups. You have to get the Southern Poverty Law Center on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> wow. In which a person is born with reproductive or uh, sexual anatomy that doesn't seem to fit the typical definitions of female or male. So this is what they would so if you're call hermaphrodite. hermaphrodite. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. You're okay. intersex. Okay. Which is nicer than it, hermaphrodite. It does yes, sound it better, I will hermaphrodite say. Hermaphrodite yes. is like. I'm going to give him that. that. Yeah. I'm going to give nicer. you. If you're a hermaphrodite from out here on out, you are intersex. Because mm-hmm. I like that. I like that. That's much nicer. It's a better one. And then asexual is the next one, which means you're not interested you at all. Yeah. Which uh, is what I always thought I Michael Jackson was. I don't think that was. that is... I mean, I don't even think that one belongs. No? Well, I mean... No. That's Because the rest of Whatever. them are all about... They're all about... Sex. Right. Yeah, about how you live your... Well, I guess if you live your life going, I'm not really interested. But I mean, that's just called like... You you're know, married. A, a video gamer, <laughs> or you're married. Yeah. I mean, that's what that is. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of, like, And I overlap. think my wife calls me an A once in a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot of overlap with these groups, which is one of the reasons it's hard to, to figure out. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a study I was reading recently that was talking about um, uh, the suicide rate among transgenders, which has been res- re- reported as incredibly high. And yeah. when I was looking at the study, and it's, even after surgery, it's yeah, it's, no, it's a higher after higher, surgery. yeah. But it's it, the study in and of itself, while it has some of those trends, the the headline numbers are much higher than they actually are when you look at the study. That's the I'm explaining why I actually looked at the study. But th- when you look at the groups, the people who are in the groups, hold on just a second. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is there something you want to talk about? No, are I was trying okay? to explain why I was looking are, at it at this particular are, study. I, I understand, it. but we are accepting. We're I know here you're for you. I know you would be here for me All if right. this was the case. We uh, know he has a problem with nitrous already. He, he's, he's, got, yes. he's got a very bad now some other deep problem. Seated problems are high, there is something <laughs> he wants a tank of nitrous next to his couch mm-hmm. so he can quote sleep at night. Wow. He can enjoy himself <laughs> and then go right to sleep. I, I am currently open to any live spot clients who want me to do recreational nitrous use commercials <laughs> uh, just uh, get in touch with our sales department uh yeah. it's fantastic uh, um, but uh, so but there, a lot of the people in the study i would prefer may i just say i would just prefer <laughs> that we don't talk about this nitrous thing anymore because that's legal and sounds good, mm-hmm. and it, I could see me and talk myself into that in about two minutes. <laughs> okay. Honey, I got to go to the dentist yeah. again today. I will say, uh, based on the hardcore research I did uh, at Cracked Magazine okay. uh, after this particular dentist appointment, I will say that I, it's not a, an advisable thing for you to do. Sure. We are uh, joking neither, a little bit. Neither However, was a gallon of Jack Daniels, right. so let's move on. It seems to be much healthier for you than a gallon of Jack oh, Daniels. thank you for that 
that information. So I want you to know about that. Swirl <laughs> right. that around the brain a little bit, all and right, we'll get back. Good. All right. And so uh, but back but to the study. The study. Yes. Many of the people in this study identified as like five, six, seven of these different groups at the same time. Oh wow! Like they're really? they're gay, they're uh, intersex, they're transsexual, so they're, they're transgender, they're cross dressers, and they're um, all kind of at the same time. So I don't even know how you'd separate these things out to actually do studies. Or, I mean, this is why I guess they have to list so many of them, because some of some people will identify as three, four, five, six of them at the same time. So they might be pissed off that, hey, I, you've got the first well, two can, I've got, but you don't have the next four. Mm-hmm. Well, the first two I've got, if you're, I've got, um, the first two, L and G, if you're a woman, you would be both, would you not? Because yes. women are gay. Right. Lesbians. Yes. So you've got two right there. So you have two right and there. And you could be B as well, easily. LGB, you could be all three of those without even thinking about it. I mean, that's uh, just. I think you can be B and Q. But you, the old Q, not the new Q. You can be bi and questioning. You can be bi and questioning. Yeah. But I don't think you could be gay, lesbian, and bi, sure. I mean, if, if you're, if you're a woman, lesbian, you like other women. If you're gay, you like other women. If you're bi, you like other women. Just, you're saying if you're a lesbian it, it, it ex- and you also like guys, then you're excluded from well, bisexuals. It, it, like if, I'm, you out if of the club. I'm born it, without the Q, if I'm if I'm born that way and I'm born liking guys, uh, and I know a lot of homosexual men who are grossed out by women. They're just grossed out not by their women. thing, not their right. preference, not their, as they used to say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I completely understand that feeling. So I would not, cons- uh, you know, if if I'm that guy. I'm not bi, too, because I have no interest in women. I find them gross, so I'm not bi as well. Right. And if you're so if you're gay, you would be the reverse of a hetero, would you not? This is all uh, very I, I'm, I'm a little you're trying to limit people and put them in boxes and I won't have it. it well, I mean, me. I just, that's I what the letters it. are doing. Well, I'm not doing it. I'm trying to understand all the that's letters. Why they of, use so many letters, because you could be all of these things well at look, once. Look, it's beautiful. We, it's, it's, some of these beautiful. things are going to be difficult to agree on, but we can agree on one thing, which mm-hmm. is what the Huffington Post brought up this week. An open letter to gay white men. No, you're not allowed to have a racial preference. Just so you know, if you're a gay <laughs> wow. white man, no. You must equally like all races, all races at the same time. No, you are not allowed. Now, other people can have preferences, but you could not have that wow. preference. Can, you could not prefer one race over another uh, in a sexual manner because the Huffington Post said no. Today. I'm coming out today. I'm coming out officially as Q. The new Q. The queer? No, queer. no, 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 no. That's Question. the old Q. Questioning is the old. Uh, recent is uh, queer. queer. Um, uh, confused. Spell wrong. Is <laughs> confused with confused a Q with a Q <laughs> Q Con- confused Q O Q U O N F U S E D confused confused you wouldn't spell it with a C why would you spell it when you're confused right because you would spell yeah, it well, yeah, right. so I'm coming right. out as uh, can we agree on one thing though if yes, you're two yeah. spirit you got to let the man drive the man <laughs> part of you must <laughs> drive I think that I think we can settle on that I think that's fair yeah. I won't go there hate monger mm-hmm. uh, Pat Gray Unleashed coming up on the Blaze Radio and TV Network and uh, on iTunes. Uh, subscribe to the podcast number of americans preparing for emergencies has soared um it, the uh, with all the things that are going on in the world um it's probably a good idea i mean you you look at what we have endured over the last year uh it's insanity when you actually look at that list we did this last night on the tv show it's it's insane how much the world has changed and what we've gone through uh m- please Call my Patriot Supply now. Less than a dollar per serving, you can get 102 servings of survival food, breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Call 800-200-7163, 800-200-7163, or preparewithglenn.com. Do it now. Glenn Beck. Glenn Beck. We'll see you back here tomorrow. We've got some uh, uh, really good stuff we want to delve into. And uh, tonight, don't miss the TV show. If you if you haven't uh, watched for a while or you haven't subscribed, TV show is uh, better than ever. And you can see it at 5 o'clock 
on the Blaze TV. Just go to theblaze.com slash TV. You can uh, download just one episode. Uh, watch the uh, serial that we did last week uh, on the chalkboard all about socialism. Watch them with your kids. They're, we're really trying to design these so you can watch them uh, and get some good things to talk about with your family. Check it out, theblaze.com slash TV. We'll see you at 5. Glenn Beck.